taurine. It's an amino acid, and we got a ton of questions about specifically its activities with your brain and your heart. So I want to get into that and break down the specific ways that taurine can be helpful to people for brain health, heart health, and of course it works everywhere else in your body as well. But to start out with a couple of things. First thing is taurine is an amino acid, and it is used mainly at cell membranes to help with cell membrane function. But there is a safety point that I would like to make right off the top because we got a really good comment by somebody on one of the other pieces of taurine content. And they said, well, when I take taurine, I get very sick for various reasons. And so I can't take taurine. Well, obviously, if there's something that makes you sick, number one, you should work with a healthcare provider to figure out why and see if there's something you can do to undo that problem. But number two, if there's something that makes you sick, please don't take it because just because it's good for most people doesn't mean it's good for everybody. Taurine does have some chemistry that as it metabolizes through the body can put stress on certain detoxification enzymes. And for some people, they have to clean that system up first before they tolerate the taurine. So it is an amino acid and that's just a quick little safety caveat. Obviously, if taurine bothers you in any Anyway, you have to stop, work with somebody to figure out what you need to clean up so that you do tolerate the taurine. But when we say mechanism and it's working mostly at membrane, either receptor or membrane activation areas, what does that mean? Well, your cell membranes are very active. They are what defines the inside versus the outside of your cell, literally a membrane around your cell. And they are formed in a lipid bilayer. So that allows, say, gases and lipids to diffuse through them usually in and out. But ions and other substances that are not fat soluble or gases have to go either through a binding site on the outside or a transporter or a channel, something of that nature. Well, it turns out that taurine, as I've mentioned in other content, has a function that they call being an osmolite. And what that means is that when taurine is sufficient at that cell membrane, it allows a change of osmolites so that they can cross back and forth in the appropriate amount and at the appropriate time. Now you might say, well, okay, if it's not water, if it's not fat soluble and it's not a gas, so it's water soluble, I understand I would need a transporter or a channel or something like that, but why not just put everything across the membrane all at the same time? Why do you say, you know, it has to be the right amount and in the right timing? Well, that is where the connection especially, although this happens everywhere, to the brain and heart comes in. In excitable membranes, excitable tissues, say in physiology you study that or something, that is something that creates an impulse, like an action potential, and tends to be things like nerve, so the nervous system where your brain lives. Your heart has a whole lot of those sort of tissues and very sensitive to these movements. So brain and heart are huge users of taurine. The reason we want the ions to move in the right amounts and at the right time is if we put them all on one side of the cell, we will have maybe an action potential impulse and then we won't have any more and then we would be dead. So that would be very bad, right? If we leave them all on the other side of the cell, same thing would happen. What we want is the taurine as an osmolite, you can think of osmolite function, kind of more like a traffic cop. So the traffic cop is going to see the volume of traffic coming, and then it's going to see a volume of traffic that needs to go the other direction. And the traffic cop function or the osmolite function is going to stop one direction and allow the other direction to go. And then when enough of that movement has happened, they're going to stop that direction and let the direction that was stopped go. In doing this with different electrically active ions, primarily it's sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and chloride, all those ions. So in allowing the traffic one direction to go enough to do one thing, then stop that and allowing the other direction to go enough to do the other thing, we then can 
can generate an appropriate action potential impulse and you can propagate a heartbeat or you can propagate the movement down a neuron and maybe making a neurotransmitter or doing something in your brain that's important so that they're working. So you might say, well, okay, that kind of makes sense. Taurine is sort of this traffic cop and to make sure the channel's open and close at the right time. What happens when taurine gets deficient in people? Well, it's kind of like if you've ever come up to an intersection that's not, there's no traffic cop, but there's lights and there's been a power outage and the lights are out. Remember what you're supposed to do from driver's education? You treat it like a four-way stop. Well, the efficiency when the traffic cop is there or the lights are working is really high. As soon as the traffic cop goes away or the lights go out, and now we're all on our own being a four-way stop, the efficiency goes way down. So the less touring you have, the less efficiency you have in these movements. They'll still move and they'll still do basically the right thing, but you can have aberrations in their movement. Now, in your heart, in the cardiovascular system, it could be something such as higher sensitivity to a rhythm disturbance or something of that nature. In your brain, it could be a whole number of things. It could have to do with synapses either speeding up or slowing down. It could have to do with action potential generation, you know, going too fast, too slow. All of those things can happen. So we're never totally out of taurine in our body generally, but if it gets low, it's just like when the lights go off or the traffic cop leaves the intersection and everybody's left to their own devices. We can still pull it off, but we're not nearly as efficient as when the lights are working at the traffic stop or when there's enough taurine. So it's a matter of degrees. An example of this is there are people for whom in emergency situations, they've done this you know, in research where they might have a particular cardiac abnormality or something going on, and normally you, they give them intravenous magnesium and that helps, right? Well, if somebody's really low on taurine and the traffic cops, you know, not letting everything move like it's supposed to, they may be much more sensitive to that dose of magnesium. Same thing happens when you take it orally and have a problem. So when we have people who say, well, I, I take magnesium and it doesn't help my muscle cramps or whatever they're taking it for, the first thing we often will look for is balance of minerals and then what would happen if we gave you taurine along with your minerals. In the brain, there is another area where because of its osmolite activity, it specifically helps. And this actually winds up helping not only brain function, but then it bleeds over into heart function. And that is in the maintenance and operation of the GABA complex. So gamma aminobutyric acid is GABA, and that is a neurotransmitter that goes to a particular type of receptor and opens a chloride channel, which generally slows down action potential, slows down neurological activity. Without our GABA receptors working appropriately, we won't maybe go to sleep as easily, might be more anxious. We could have seizures because of poor GABA function. You could have any manner of other sort of kind of hyperactive sort of things. So taurine also specifically supports the maintenance of the GABA receptor complex and the way that that spills over into cardiac function is the better the GABA organization is going from the brain outward, the more calm the heart rate and blood pressure will be as well. So taurine is literally helping for on a number of different fronts through this, you know, almost mythical osmolite activity that it does. So I hope those answer the specific questions that we got about taurine and its function. And we did have the one safety note where if anything makes you feel badly or sick, please don't take it. Even if it's good for you, get that sorted out with a healthcare practitioner. And I really want to thank everybody who's joined the channel. We've built a pretty good community here. Please do share, like, subscribe, do all this stuff. And I will see you guys on the next video.